In this video and in the next one, we are going to look at the recursions that are called non-additive. All the previous examples that we've seen so far show that the recursion looks like this um, generally. So the cost from this stage T plus the cost from the remaining stages. However, we are going to see the recursions that do not use this relation of addition. And these recursions are called non-additive. You don't really need to um, memorize the name, but you just need to know how it works. Let's meet our good old friend Joe Kuga again. If you recall from the first week, he wants to go from New York to Los Angeles. Now, um, here he is no longer interested in minimizing the length of his trip, which was his objective in the first example in the week one, if you recall, right? Now he is interested in minimizing the maximum altitude above the sea level that he will encounter during his drive. So um, in this figure, you can see this is the altitude. Um, let's say if you go from city two to city five, it is nine, I don't know, 900, okay. This is 9,000 feet above the sea level. And then let's say if you go from um, city one to city four, you experience the altitude of 6,000 feet above sea level. Now, what Joe wants in this example is he wants to drive from New York to Los Angeles, but the maximum altitude that he experienced um, during his whole driving journey is minimized. So um, the altitude above sea level is as minimum as possible along his journey from city one to city 10. So use the dynamic programming to determine how should you um, choose the cities going from city one to city 10. As usual, you may want to pause this video to take the time to really read this problem carefully before you continue, okay? We start at stage four the very last day before we reach our destination, City 10 or Los Angeles, okay? We may start day four at City 7. We may start day four at City 8. We might start day four at City 9. Wherever we start day four, the only possible reasonable decision is just go to City 10 directly. And the altitude that we are going to experience is 13 if we go from 7 to 10, 8 if we go from 8 to 10, and then 9 if we go from 9 to 10. Again, same as before, we don't know yet where we should be or um, how we can be at this cities at stage 4. We don't know and we don't care. That's why we say we are working backward. We just assume that we don't know whatever happened before this point of time. We just think about from here until our destination at stage, um, at the very last stage, okay? We go one step backward to stage three. As usual at stage three, we don't know yet where we will be, uh, whether we will be at city five or city six. So as usual, we say if we wake up at day three at city five, if we wake up at day three at city six, we must list out all the possible options. If we wake up at city five, we have three possible options. Go to seven, go to eight, or go to nine. And then if we wake up at city six, similarly, we have also three options. Go to seven, go to eight, go to nine. Okay. Let's say if we go from 5 to 7. From 5 to 7, the altitude is 8. So C57 equals 8. And then we must compare this altitude with the rest of the journey and 
take the maximum because um, if we go along this path 5 to 7 and then 7 to 10 you can see that the maximum altitude that we will experience is 13. That's why you see the word max here. You take the max between the altitude of this stage and the altitude of the remaining stages. So F47 you see here is 13. So you compare between 8 and 13, you take the max. So that's why you get the value 13 here. Another example, let's say you go from 5 to 5 to 8. So 5 to 8, uh, at, the, at this stage itself, the altitude is 7. And then from 8 to 10, the altitude is 8. So you take the maximum between 7 with F4, 8. F4, 8 is 8. So the maximum is 8. That's why you write down 8. Uh, you may wonder why do we take the maximum? Well, because the problem says Joe wants to minimize the maximum altitude that he experienced during his journey okay so you have three possible destinations or decisions if you start this day at city 5 and then among these three you take the minimum okay so um, this is just like the um, the wording in the problem minimize the maximum altitude so you can see minimize the maximum altitude and here what here's why this is called non-additive because you see that inside this recursion function you don't have the plus instead you have this max function compare two values and then take the max okay um, another example let's say you wake up at city six and you decide to go to city 9 it means that you need to compare between 6 and 9 the altitude is 7 and then f4 9 9 so 7 and 9 take the maximum the um, maximum is 9 okay once you have done for all these possible decisions take the minimum again because we want to minimize the maximum altitude so you check the maximum first and then among all of them take the minimum one we go backward again to stage two and then at stage two we may find ourselves starting this day at city two city three or maybe at city four and then you list out all the possible decisions based on each state so if your state is two the only possible decision is going from 2 to 5. If you go from 2 to 5, you will um, experience the altitude of um, C to 5 and then compare it with the rest of the journey. In this case, it is F3, 5. Okay, you go from 2 to 5 and then the rest of the journey is F3, 5. Okay, sorry, I mean the rest the maximum altitude of, um, sorry, the minimum of the maximum altitude of the remaining of the journey. Okay, so F35 is the minimum of the maximum altitude from stage 3 until the end of the problem. Okay, it's a bit long, the definition, but it's the correct definition. Okay, you compare this two and then so F25 is 9 and then F35 is this, take the one with the asterisks, and then the maximum between two is nine. Why we don't have the curly bracket? Because you only have one possible decision. If you have two possible decisions like this, you have curly bracket, and then you take the min, the minimum between these two possible decisions. Finally, we have reached stage one where we know for sure that we start this day at CD1. We have three possible options going to two, going to three, going to four. Um, and then let's say an example from one to four means that we are going to compare the altitude between one, four, one to four is six, and then the remaining is F24. So F24 is this, take the one with asterisks, 
6 and 8, the maximum of them is 8. And then because we have a lot of possible decisions, we take the minimum among them and then there are two optimal decisions here. You can go either from 1 to 3 or 1 to 4. So here's the summary for the problem. We have four stages and then the state is where Joe is at the beginning of day T, denoted by I. The decision is the city where Joe is going next, which is denoted by uh, J. And the recursion function for the very last day is that um, if we wake up at city I at the beginning of day 4, the only possible decision is we must go to city 10 because that's our final destination. So the altitude that we experience is CI, 10. Because wherever we are at the beginning of this day at city I, we must go to city 10. For the stages before um, day 4, this is the recursion. We start this day at city I, and then we go to city J. We must compare the altitude between the altitude from I to J and the altitude for the remaining stages. Okay, So this is the altitude from going from I to J, and then this is the minimum of the maximum altitude for the remaining journey. And then you see that the state changes from I here to become J in the next stage because we decide to go from I to J. And then if you have a lot of possible options, J, where you can go next, then you put the curly bracket and then you take the minimum among them. Now, we can define FTI to become the lowest or the minimum of the maximum altitude that Joe can encounter in a trip from city I in stage T until the end of the problem, which is reaching city 10. Okay, so that's the end of this um, example where it shows the non-additive recursion. We are going to have one more video to show another example of this kind of non-additive recursion. So see you on the next one and thank you.